Hello guys and welcome to the next episode of creating a third person controller in Unity and today we're going to work with the animator and actually animate our model so he runs and walks when we move him. So first go to your model itself, the raw uh, file not the prefab and make sure the animation type is set to humanoid. Uh, this is obviously if you have a human uh, model, if you have some other kind of model you can keep it on general. Then hit apply. Now we can actually use human animations for this model. So the next step in the process would be to add an animator uh, component to the game object itself. So we're going to do that now and we're also going to create an animator controller. So let's hit add component and then we're going to add animator and this will allow us to animate our model. Now uh, on the avatar here, if you're using my model, it's probably blank. Just click this little button and you should see low poly man avatar and click that. Let's right click in the art here. Actually, I'm going to make a folder first. Uh, I'm going to call this animations and we're going to put all of our things to do with animations in this folder. I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to create an animator controller and this will be the component we use to actually drop in animations on our player. I'm going to call it humanoid because those are the kinds of animations we'll be using. We can drag that then in the controller section of the animator and then I'm going to just get some animations here. So I have an idle. As you can see when I play it, the player just idles. I have a run. If I click play, the player is running and then I have a walk. If I click play, the player is walking. So we're going to set this up in a thing called a blend tree. So I'm clicking on the base layer, which is a default layer you should have in your animator. Um, if you don't see this, make sure you're clicking on your model and then clicking on the animator window up here. Um, and then we're going to go to parameters and I'm going to insert two floats. I'm going to call them vertical and horizontal. And you know what, just for the namesake, I'm actually just going to put the horizontal above the vertical because that's usually what I do and I don't want to start doing something different. You don't need to do it, do whichever way you want to do. So I'm going to then right click in here in the empty space in our base layer and uh, I'm going to create state from new blend tree. I'm going to rename this to locomotion because it's going to be our uh, walking, idle and running animations in the future strafing and stuff when we handle that. And I'm going to double click it here to open it up. Remember this on our base layer again. Now you're going to see this thing called a blend tree. If we click it, you will see blend type. Let's make a, or let's make our type rather, a 2D freeform directional. And what this means is we take in two parameters. Uh, in this case, it will be horizontal and then vertical. And based on that, we can actually play animation. And don't worry if that doesn't make sense right now. It will make sense very soon, I promise. So you see here now we have these horizontal and vertical bars. So let's add three motion fields, one for every animation that we do have. So we're going to ignore this horizontal one completely, meaning they're all going to be zero because we're not messing with that right now. That will be when we do locking on and strafing. Let's insert our idle animation here in the first one. And as you can see here, the first value will be uh, horizontal and the second value will be the vertical value of this position X and position Y. So let's drop in our walk and then we're going to make the position Y 0.5. And that's because we want our player to walk when we're tilting the joystick halfway to full. And then we're going to drop in a run animation and we're going to make the Y position one. So when you're fully pressing forward on the joystick, we want our player to run. And the idle being zero, zero, because when we're not pressing the joystick up at all, you don't want to move. So as you can see, if I move this vertical from zero to 0 0.5 halfway with the joystick up, we start walking. And then if I change that from 0 0.5 to one, we go into a full on run. And we're basically going to change that number, the vertical and the horizontal numbers that is, uh, to the vertical and horizontal numbers on our input handler that we made just a couple of videos ago. So if you're tilting the joystick halfway up, that vertical bar will go halfway up. If you're tilting the joystick fully up, then the vertical bar will go fully up. Uh, with the W keys, obviously, since you can't tilt it, uh, when you press it, it will just go fully up. So that is how we're going to animate our character. So first we need to make a script to talk to the animator and uh, edit those values. So we're going to call that the animator manager. And on the script for now, we're only going to make the one function. So let's open that up. I'm just going to actually erase the start and update method on this script for now because we're not going to use them. So let's erase that. And the method I'm going to create, the function rather, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to call it public void update animator values. And then to use this function, we're going to need to pass two types of information. We're going to need to pass a float, and we're going to call that horizontal movement 
and then we're going to pass another float and as you probably guessed we're going to call that a vertical movement so we're going to take the numbers from our input handler and we're going to pass them through this and then from those numbers we're going to make some alterations here so we're actually going to need to call the animator itself to grab those variables or those parameters rather so let's say a variable type of animator we're going to call it animator and then we'll make it a wake method and we'll call it on the awake and since the animator sits in the same game object as this script we're just going to say animator get component animator you could also make that variable animator public and just drag it in manually if you'd like it's all the same so we're going to already actually grab these parameters so i'm going to make an int i'm going to call it horizontal i'm going to make an int i'm going to call it vertical now the horizontal and vertical animator parameters we just made can be referenced in a script using integer variables and I'll show you how. So we're going to take these two integer variables and we're going to say down here on the awake method horizontal is equal to animator dot string to hash and then we're going to say open brackets and we're going to say horizontal and then we're going to do the same thing for vertical and all that means is when we now type in horizontal or vertical referencing these integer values we're actually now referencing our animator values for horizontal and vertical. That's all it is put simply. So referencing this variable, we'll now go to the animator and we'll edit the horizontal parameter. And the same is true for the vertical. So uh, that's cleared up. We can say animator.setFloat. And we're going to change the float of the horizontal parameter, which we just made on the animator a while ago. So then we would say our horizontal, which is this one right here. And as you can see, see it's an integer ID. And then we're going to set it to a value, which would be the horizontal movement that we're passing through this function, which is the movement from our input manager or will be. And then the damp time, I'm going to say 0.1f and time dot delta time. The damp time is basically the blend time. So it doesn't look like it just, it just snaps uh, or it just instantly changes. There's some blend time between it to make it look softer and nicer and smoother. And now I'll do the same thing with the vertical and vertical movement. Now you can be done right here if you'd like, but I'm going to implement something I call animation snapping because I personally like the look of it. It's used in a lot of games. The first one I can think of because of my channel in the series running obviously is Dark Souls. And what this does in, in simplicity is if you're, if you have a value, um, so if you're about to walk, but you're not quite walking, you're not quite running the code will snap you to a walk or a run depending on how far you are. So basically it rounds the values. And I find that just looks a lot neater and cleaner. Some titles you don't need it. It's mostly for if your animations don't go together perfectly or if it looks a little strange when they're halfway blended between each other. Um, I choose to use it on most of the things I do, but it is just a preference and you don't have to use it. But I'm gonna show you how to make it because it is valuable information. So let's make a float snapped horizontal and a float snapped vertical. And then we're going to say down here, if horizontal movement is greater than zero, and it's also also horizontal movement is less than 0.55f, then we're just going to snap it. And we're going to say snapped horizontal is equal to 0.5f. So basically what this is saying is if you get an in, if you get input from your controller and it's greater than zero and less than 0.55f, it will always be 0.5f. And that means on the animator, it will always play uh, the walking animation perfectly and not a blend between the walking and the running or the idle and the walking, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're going to say else if horizontal movement is greater than 0.55f, we're going to say snapped horizontal equals one. Then we're going to say else if, and we're going to do the same thing for the negatives. We're going to say horizontal movement is less than zero and horizontal movement is greater than negative 0.55f then we're going to say snapped horizontal is equal to negative 0.5f and then else if horizontal movement is less than minus 0.55f, then snapped horizontal will be minus one. And lastly, we're gonna say else, if nothing else, it is zero. 
And then we can just basically copy this whole thing. I'm just gonna copy it, but before I paste it, I'm gonna make a region here. So basically we're gonna switch out our horizontal movement now for our snapped horizontal movement. And then up here we're gonna make a region and I'm gonna say snapped horizontal and then end the region down here. Then I'm gonna paste this whole chunk of code again. I'm gonna replace horizontal with vertical. And I'm gonna make a region and call this snapped vertical. I'm gonna fast forward here, so I'm gonna quickly do this. You guys know what to do. Just replace all the horizontals with vertical. And down here say snapped vertical. Okay, now let's save that. Now we actually have to call this function somewhere in our scripts. And the best place to call that right now would be our input uh, manager because that is where we're actually doing our inputs. So we need to call this animator manager on our input manager. So let's go over to our input manager now. So right below player controls, I'm just gonna say animator manager, animator manager, and then on the awake method, which we don't have, so I'll create one just below this. And I will say animator manager equals get component because this sits on the same game object as that script. And we're gonna say animator manager. And we're gonna save that. Now, right below our movement input, I'm gonna make a private float. And I'm going to call that move amount. I'm gonna to explain to you why. You're thinking we could just use our vertical input and our horizontal input. Well, not exactly, not for this version of our movement. With our strafing, that will be true, but right now it's not. We have to say animator manager dot update animator values, and then we're going to say zero, because there's never any movement on our horizontal yet until we do strafing. And then we're gonna say move amount. Now, we actually have to set our move amount, and our move amount is gonna equal math f dot clamp, which all it does is clamp the value between a value of zero and one. So we're gonna use clamp01, sorry, mathf dot clamp01. And then we're gonna say inside these brackets, mathf.abs for absolute. And we're gonna pass through our horizontal value. And then we're gonna say plus mathf.abs vertical value. And all the abs does is basically takes away the sign in front of the value. So it's always going to be positive. And I'll show you why that's important momentarily. But if we save that now, we minimize our scripts and we hit the play button and now we can run around on the screen and that is pretty cool. All right, so if you understood all that and you made it this far, great job. So back to this code here, uh, what we have is mathfclamp01, which again clamps it between a value of zero and one. And inside that we have mathabs, which is the absolute value of the horizontal input plus the absolute value of the vertical input. So all that means is if the horizontal or vertical input is negative, it will make it into a positive value by change or just getting rid of the sign in front of it rather. Um, and the reason why we do this in our script is because right now in our animator, we actually can't work with a negative value because our uh, vertical input only goes between zero and one. So we're going here to show you right now, if I click on the blend tree, as you can see, go to our animation preview. All we can do is go from zero to one. So we have to make that an absolute value. Now in the future, when we do walking backwards and strafing and such, when we're locked onto targets, we'll actually use the negative values because we'll make uh, negative values for walking backwards and running backwards and strafing backwards. But when we're not locked on and we're just moving forward, we only want a positive value. I hope this video was helpful. As usual, if it was, don't forget to drop a like. It does genuinely help my series a lot. And leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're feeling super generous, guys, check out my Patreon below. All support is appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next one. Then we are going to jump into setting up our camera and moving around screen with our player.